Can you see it? Good evening. Don Corey here at Annika Rod and Fly. And uh, if you could just check in to make sure the video and the audio is good, we'll get started in a few minutes. We can hear you, and we can see you. Can you see the comments? Mm-hmm. I can see them. Yep. Okay. Hello from Delaware. Hello from Maine. We've got a nice uh, rainy day, temperatures low 70s, perfect fishing weather. <laughs> Howdy. This is the first time out of the shoot for us, so. Uh, I've got my CFO, uh, Chief <laughs> Fishing Officer, Jill, on the technology end, and uh, I'm going to be behind the vice, so we'll... Try to make it happen. Make it happen. You just give a couple more minutes to uh, give people a chance to get on, and then uh, we'll start with our first fly tonight, the Angel of Death. When most people think about uh, fishing, in fly fishing in particular in Maine, they think of uh, brook trout and landlocked salmon. But we have a, a fantastic fisheries in Maine that sometimes is overlooked, the smallmouth bass. Um, the Penobscot River, which uh, is literally a quarter of a mile from the shop, uh, has some uh, premier smallmouth fishing uh, flies. Uh, Jill and I were out. Uh, Friday on the Penobscot and uh, they were hitting poppers uh, most of the day and some underwater flies as well. So uh, we're going to tie a couple of uh, my favorites uh, over the years and time permitting we may uh, we may add a third. So we'll guess we'll get ready to get started. All right, we're going to go with the first uh, fly tonight is the uh, Black Gurgler, the Angel of Death. Uh, that's the fly here on the screen, and I'll get this fly out. It won't let me. Did you get in? It won't let me. Just touch the screen. I did. <clears throat> Just give you a, a quick overview of what I'm using for equipment tonight. Um, Norvice Legacy uh, Vice. Uh, Annika Blue is the color. Oh, excuse me. Um, Liberty Blue is the color. Uh, it just happens to be the color for the shop as well. Um, I'm using the uh, stainless uh, uh, oversized hubs, magnum hubs, and I'm using the shank jaw, and I'm coming out of the, uh, the regular hub rather than the uh, center, uh, the, the hub that allows for a center hookup. Um, I, I like this better. For me personally, because I can leave the hook a little further out of the jaws and still maintain a, a 
fairly good access, and that gives me access to the back of the hook. Um, I have got a granite base, which is awesome to keep the vise from vibrating. I have a light that I'm not going to be using tonight, but uh, it's here as a backup. Uh, the hook that we're going to start with is uh, is a straight eye. It, this one, particular one, is a Mustad 3366. Um, could use a fire hole 811, a Kona XSS, or a Gamagatsu B10S. Um, uh, but uh, this is the hook that I tie on the most. Um, Fred, uh, we want something that's got some width to it. Uh, I'm going to be using UTC 140 tonight. Uh, you could use Danville Flymaster Plus, um, Semperfly, Nano Silk, uh, 100 denier, 200 denier. Beavis Power Thread 140. Um, I'm going to use black bucktail, some flash in the in the tail, foam, some black estaz, and solar as bone dry, and some uh, head cement uh, while we're building the fly. So we're going to start first with the hook. Someone wants to know the name of your of your shop and if you have a Facebook page. That would be Annika. Broad and Fly, and I do have a Facebook page, and uh, working on a e-commerce, uh, not up and running yet, but I uh, hope to be there. Uh, the, the name comes from uh, my two daughters, one's Anna and one's Erica, so that's uh, if you're wondering where that came from. So we're going to start out uh, getting a thread base on the hook. Excuse me while I get a little background for my fly. I usually get down and back two or three times, ending at the back of the bend, which is just a little bit um, to the bend side of the point, about halfway between the uh, point and the barb on this fly. You can use black bucktail. Um, this is not, um, a lot of flies call for particular areas or particular kind of bucktail. Um, it really doesn't matter with this fly. If it's curly, if it's straight, um, it, it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to grab a bunch, um, maybe the traditional pencil width. And I'm going to grab the tips and just pull out the loose at stuff at the bottom. And I'm gonna hand stack this. I'm not gonna put this in a stacker. Um, I'm just gonna grab the tips and hold the uh, butts tight and pull that out and then lay it back in. Just a couple times to get the ends. So if there's any long ones, they'll come out. Drop them. I'm going to make this tail about two times the shank. So I'm going to hold that on there and get a measurement. And I'm going to put a loose wrap around and another loose wrap. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a twist so we can get most that bucktail on the all around the hook and then I'm going to wrap towards the eye with gentle pressure not too tight we don't want that to flare so I'm going to continue towards the eye And when I'm, oh, probably three eyes behind the eye, I'm going to reach up and cut that off at an angle. In both of these flies tonight, it's important. Thread tension is going to be very important, so that's why we're using a little heavier thread. 
Um, we, you really have to bind this down, especially when we add the foam. Um, we really need to get that um, bound down to the hook, and we're going to use some glue in the process of building this. Um, this year I've been using copper a lot more for flash. The fish seem to like it. We're just going to use uh, two or three strands. I'm going to loop it around the thread. And I'm, about, I'm probably a quarter of an inch um, from my original tie-in point. And I'm just going to pull that back over the top of the tail and give it a little bit of a spread. And then I'm going to cut the flash a little bit staggered so uh, we have a little bit of flash going back. I've got probably uh, four strands double so I'd have eight strands of uh, flash in the tail right now. I'm going to take your glue of choice and I'm going to coat coat the thread straggler here and again you can palm the uh, the spool in your uh, automatic bobbin I'm not just I'm not just relying on the thread wrapped around the legs um, to get extra tension I'm actually pinching that in my palm So now we're going to take a piece of uh, two millimeter foam. Uh, this uh, we use. I usually size this by the gap of the hook. So uh, if you're tying this, I tie this anywhere from two to six. Um, if you're tying to six, obviously this is going to be narrower. Um, I've tied this for pike uh, using a two or three layers of this and tied them on a four or five x long hook and uh, it works very well. I'm going to cut this two millimeter foam at a little bit of an angle so that it gives us a little better transition when we tie it in. And I'm going to start tying this in about two eyes behind the eye and you'll see when we wrap the body and get to tying the foam down, that gives us a tie-in spot to bring our foam back. So I'm going to hold this on my side of the hook, and I'm going to put a loose wrap around it. And I'm going to space it out, and I'm going to put another loose wrap. If you pull it down too tight right at the beginning, you can actually cut the foam, and we don't want to do that. So even if the foam right now is a little bit on my side of the hook, that's okay. And I'm going to come back to the original tying spot, which if you remember was back right at the, between the point and the barb. So now I'm going to come back towards the front, and I'm taking those trying to wrap the thread over those little bubbles of foam. So I've already crushed that down a little bit. I'm going to go back over it. I'm palming the spool as I go. And I'm going to put now my thread wraps closer together. And I'm going to come back again. I've still got Quite a bit of pressure. The body of this fly is Estaz. Um, this is 15 millimeter. You could use 15 or 30. Either one, it really doesn't matter. Um, the 30 obviously will get, be a little bit fuller.
what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this in at the front. I'm going to put a half hitch on. Bob into the thread post. I'm going to take my head cement and I'm going to coat that foam you get to the back you just need to go around that barb and I'm still leaving myself room at the eye So I'm tying the Estes off pretty much on the bare hook. It's ahead of where the foam was tied off. I tend to cut, I tend to rotate and cut so that I'm trimming on the top away from the bobbin. Uh, anybody that's tied for a little bit will attest to cutting the thread and that's never fun. So now we're going to fold this forward. And we don't want to pull this tight. If you pull it tight, it's going to um, possibly open up here at the back. So I kind of give it a loose tug. I'm going to hold it on my side of the hook. And I'm going to put two wraps of thread one on top of the other, just behind the eye. And I'm going to squeeze this so that it envelops the hook. And I'm going to put a couple more wraps right in the same spot. Then I'm going to pull this back. And I'm going to pack some thread right under the foam. And then I'm going to come back to the back. I'm going to put a little cement. You could use super glue for this or cement. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to put a couple wraps on top of the foam and then I'm going to go in front. And I'm going to put a four turn whip finish on. And I'm going to put a second. get a couple of stragglers and I usually cut by just running my scissors across the, the thread one blade rather than trying to go in and cut so now I'm gonna pull that out over the eye of the hook and chop it off now the original patent um, came from Jack Gartside. It was a Gartside gurgler, and it was probably his uh, one of his uh, trademark flies. The thing that he did a little different than this is he used um, saddle hackle for the body instead of the Estaz. I think the the synthetic works works a little better, and it stays full. The hackle had a tendency to fold down when it got wet. Um, Now if we take a little uh, bone dry, and I'm just going to touch the back, it makes it a little more durable. And you can also use the bone dry to stand up the uh, to stand up the lip a little bit. If you want it to stand up, it will pop better. Um, it'll also cast like a sparrow, so you need to, you got to play that game, and uh, I usually take a pair of scissors with me, and if I want to trim that off a little bit, uh, you can also, you can also knock the corners off. And 
that makes it there's a little less uh, less wind resistance, so it will uh, it will cast a little better. That fly, um, I've even put um, I've even put head cement on the back of the fly because that's where the the bass will tear it up, and that's usually why the fly. Uh, eventually gets retired is because the back of the foam gets so chewed up by smallmouth but uh, that's your uh, angel of death um, I've used it I violate all the rules of uh, bright fish bright fly bright day dark day dark fly I use this all the time and uh, excellent pattern I've tied them in white and yellow orange but the, the black seems to be the best Now the next fly we're going to tie is a frog pattern. Uh, this one, uh, this is another one that's going to uh, float the foam. I mean, you can't beat it for there's no gink needed. It uh, it will float forever. Um, this particular fly, we're going to use the same hook, the 3366 in size 2. 2s uh, and 4s are the most common um, that we fish here for smallmouth. You could tie it down to a 6. Uh, uh, it will cast pretty well uh, this size, a 2, uh, with a 7 or down to a 6 possibly. Um, it's gonna, not going to cast quite as well, but uh, 7 or 8 even seems to do very well. Um, this particular pattern, uh, rubber legs, we're going to use some schlappen in the back uh, just to give it a little pulsating, a little movement in the water. Uh, we're going to use Estaz again for the uh, belly of the fly and we're going to use two layers of foam on this particular fly um, and you'll see why when we, when we get ready to stand it up. I like a red face on the popper. Um, it, it's fairly visible in the water, and uh, I think it, um, whether it simulates a little blood or gills or whatever, I think it's all good. And that would be uh, Chip the Wonder Dog uh, <laughs> sounding off. So we'll get a, uh, another size two in the vise, and we'll get started on fly number two. For those of you who may be joining us late, this is the Nor Norvice Facebook Live Sunday night edition. Um, my name is Don Corey with uh, Annika Rod and Fly, um, and I'm tying a couple of my favorite smallmouth bass flies, the uh, American, Expre American Express flies. Don't leave home without them. Somebody said your vice is beautiful. Well, thank you. I missed the name. <laughs> when the uh, when the colors came out, I uh, uh, I really liked the blue, uh, and uh, although I probably had some pushing for a purple one, but uh, <laughs> blue one out. We're going to swap bobbins. And we're going to go to uh, we're going to go to a yellow chartreuse. Um, you could use black. You could use white. Um, any of the again, the strength of the thread and the thickness of the thread is what we're looking for. And these down and back, they don't have to completely cover the, the shank side by side. Yeah, a little texture is good for grabbing the materials and the glue. And on this particular fly, we're going to go down the bend a little bit. I like to run the rubber legs so that they're closer to the water. 
and so I take the take the thread down the bend just a hair and then I bring the uh, thread back to <coughs> almost halfway someone was asking again what you were tying again this is a foam frog and I don't know it doesn't look a a whole lot like some of the frogs that most of the frogs that I see but I think the fish um, looking up and seeing it um, on top of the water it obviously does something to trigger them what I think it's probably the rubber legs as much as anything I've taken three these are round rubber legs yellow I've taken three of them and I leave them together they come on a on a wide strip. I leave them together because they're a little easier to manage when they're all together and then we'll separate them when we're done. Wrap those around the thread and then take the thread around the hook and that will pin them right where we want them. And to get more of an anchor point I'm going to wrap three wraps of thread on the eye side of that tie-in spot so I can pull these now and I'm going to bind them down and I'm putting a little pressure and I'm going to take that down the bend and then back and I'm just going to leave them like that um, you could use black green yellow uh, I, I don't think the color really matters I think it's more the the twitching in the water that triggers the triggers the strike. Next we're going to use a schlappin feather. Uh, very webby. Uh, gives us a little more. You could use a big saddle hackle that's not quite as webby but this gives a little more bulk to the fly um, and I think it's a little more movement. You could tie marabou on the back and, and accomplish the same thing. We want to we're going to get four or five wraps of schlappin so I'm figuring that between the barb and the point, that's when my thread is plumb bobbing. If I tie it in and start wrapping where the, uh, the back of the rubber legs are, we should be good. I'm going to hold the tip, and I'm going to stroke the fibers back. So that I have an opening. I'm going to bring my thread back to the where the rubber legs are ended timing off. I'm going to throw a loose wrap over that. And then I'm going to wrap so that I'm plumb bobbing between the point and the barb. That'll give us probably four to five wraps of hackle. Now when I wrap this, I just kind of stroke those fibers, rear wood. Watch the point of the hook because that will kill that feather. And I'm going to wrap the stem side by side, very close together. That's three. That's four. And that's five. Rocky Phillips said, if I ever get a Norvice, I want, I want to get the blue. Well, Rocky, I'm with you, and I'd be happy to order you one. As I'm sure Tim <laughs> would like to as well. Okay, so right now my tie-off of that is right at the point of the hook. And if I wanted to lay those down a little bit, I could go back over them, but I really don't want to. I'm going to bring my thread up. And now I'm going to take two strips of foam. A red and a green. Norvi says, always support our dealers first. 
And Rocky wrote, ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> they all come from the mothership. Again, I'm going to put a, a slight angle that you can, it's not really critical. You can trim them to a point. I just usually make them a little bit thinner. Um, and you want to have the color on the bottom is the one that ultimately is going to be the color on the top. So we want the green on the bottom and the red on the top. And again, I'm going to start tying these in so that I have a point ahead of the foam tie-in to bind it down when I wrap it back over the top. I'm going to hold these on a little bit to my, on my side of the hook. Open wraps. And I know when I started doing this, it seemed like you would never be able to bind this down onto the hook, but you can. So I'm back to just about over the barb right now. It's crushing the schlappen a little bit, but when we fold this foam back to the eye, that schlappen will come right back. So I'm going to go back to the front with tightening, tightening wraps. And don't be afraid to grab this foam. If the foam goes a little bit to one side, bring it back. Doing the same thing we did with the black. I'm just taking those bubbles of foam out. Now at this point, before I really start putting more thread tension on, I'm going to run a little bit of head cement on the underside where the foam is getting crushed around the hook. Now I'm making tighter wraps. I'm palming my bobbin in my hand so I'm getting much tighter tension. And it's it always amazes me, but we're really pulling that down onto the hook shank. So now we're going to use um, again, we're going to use Estaz. I mean, you could use Crystal Flash. I like the Estaz because there's not quite as many fibers, and they kind of come off um, 180 degrees from each other. And um, I put two layers on, so it, it gives me the, the bulk that I want. This is 15 millimeter, and this is dark olive. You could use, if you wanted a yellow belly on this, you could use yellow or gold. Um, you could use black if you only wanted to buy one color. So I'm going to tie that in. A little head cement. I tie, I tie flies at the shop like I'm tying them for myself. Um, I want them to last. I don't want customers bringing flies back that uh, fall apart. So I like to have a nice durable fly and we're going to throw a half hitch on. Thread to the post. <laughs> and make sure you get a, a wrap at the very back and tighten it up. couple wraps behind and a couple wraps in front and the material away from my thread and if I was tying a dozen of these or whatever I would be using the uh, Estes right out of the package because with the Norvice um, when your threads on the post um, if you're using spooled like tinsel floss or this Estaz, you can just hold it and let it feed it out of the bag, and then you have absolutely no waste. I'm just pulling back any of that Estaz that's out over the eye, and I've probably got 
an eye, my thread is about an eye behind the eye at this point. And again, I'm going to pull these over the top. And it looks like my schlappen is, is matted down a little bit, but that's fine. Um, as I pull this just a little bit, it'll uh, once it gets wet, it will sleep back and it'll puff right up. Uh, we have got two layers. I'm going to pinch to start it around the hook. Two wraps of thread, one over the other. And before I tighten it, I always check to make sure I got room. I've pulled a little bit tight. Two more tight wraps. Tighter. I'm palming that right now. I mean, I could bend that hook if I wanted to. So now I'm going to pull this back and I'm going to get six or eight wraps of thread right up underneath that foam. Oh, I think that was nine. Fourteen. Oh, fourteen. <laughs> Peanut gallery. <laughs> okay, so I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. I'm going to put a little head cement on. Clifford Souza said, wife wants to know what the name of the scissors he is using. Well, this, these are, uh, these are Annika Rod and Fly scissors, um, and that's a, a guaranteed, that's a sapphire, I think. I mean, these are like $340 scissors that I'm able to sell for 25 bucks. So, no, these are uh, ones that I, um, the company that I get them from, they inscribe them for me. They're, uh, if you look at, um, not that I want to compare, if you look at the loon versus these scissors um, and Dr. Slicks, uh, you can lay these together and they probably, I'm not a machinist, but they probably come out of the same machine. They're serrated on one side, um, can get them either way, serrated both blades, one blade or no blades. Um, they want to know if this is a gurgler or not. Somebody said it looks like a guard side gurgler. Um, it has some of the same characteristics as a guard side gurgler, but um, it, with the two layers of foam, it's much thicker with the rubber legs. Um, it's a little variant from that. So I'm going to... Uh, Will this foam work with pink foam? Pink? I'm sorry, will this fly work with pink foam? Yes. Uh, you can tie this in any number of colors. Um, you could tie it in black if you wanted all black. You could tie it. I've tied it with yellow foam and green foam. Um, I just started using the red last year and uh, had decent luck with it yes, uh, Friday. Yes, you did. Um, I got my first Norvice back in the uh, late 70s from uh, Norm. And a uh, little funny story, I, when I got it, um, I really wanted it. I got it. It stayed in the box on a shelf in the shop for six months. I, never, I was too scared to get it out and use it. And uh, I finally said, you know, okay, stupid, you need to get that out and use it. And haven't looked back. All right, this is where the magic's going to happen. Someone wants to know um, what size that is again? That's a two. Reminds me of a Moorish mouse. Moorish mouse, yeah. So I trim these off, and this has the most consistent gurgle in the water or bubble pushing of anything I've ever used. Um, and I, and I'm, I think it's because of what we're going to do next. I'm going to take and open that foam up, and I'm going to put just a little tiny bit of, you can use Zapagap or Zement, um, one of the super glue types. And this is a uh, foam retention device. 
Uh, it may look like a small <laughs> clothespin, but this is, in a fly shop, this is a foam retention device. And what we're going to do is we're going to clip those two pieces together at the angle we want them to be at. And that is about the angle. Yes. Wayne Thayer says, I love my Norvice. Thanks, Don, for getting me started. Who said that? Wayne. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome. It, it's, it's easy to get people to like it once they sit down and use it. Uh, so what that's going to do is that's going to keep that, if you want to call it a lip, I don't know what you call it because it's above the hook and not, you, you'd normally think of a lip below. But what that will do is keep that angle. And when you strip that in the water, even a small strip or, a, or pulling the tip of your rod, um, it makes a very pronounced popping noise. And these flies, both this one and the Angel of Death, um, I tell people you got to be patient. You got to throw it out and you got to let the ring stop. Sometimes it's 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Those rings will dissipate from the uh, fly. And sometimes fish will come out of the water as soon as it hits the water. Other times they'll, they'll wait. And you, you just have to wait and then start stripping. Uh, I vary the strip. Sometimes it's a short jerk and a stop, a short stop. Sometimes it's two quick ones. Uh, sometimes you can rip it across the water. But uh, Friday when we went, most of the flies, the fish that we caught, when the fly hit the water and waited, that first pop was when they, when they hit it. So they were obviously looking at it. So while that's drying, I'm going to uh, Separate the legs. Ben Cleveland said good night and amazing time. Thank you. <clears throat> so we're going to pull those six legs. And again, like I said before, I always carry a pair of scissors with me. Yes. Somebody said to call it the clothes peg killer. <laughs> Could very well be. Um... I tend to leave my legs a little bit longer in the vise and then trim them short, shorter if I need to. Um, I don't have an exact length. I usually will I think rubber legs, if they're too long, they dangle in the water and they don't twitch. And I think it's important that they twitch in the water, not just dangle there. Um, so this is about the length that I would fish that at. Now you gotta remember that this, because we've run the rubber legs down the bend a little bit, when this sits in the water, the legs are already gonna be into the water and pointing down. And that's what they're gonna do. They're just gonna twitch back and forth. So this right here, if you, it, this size foam retention device you can set this on the table. I can't show you that because, uh, well, I guess I can. So you can put it on the edge of your table and let it dry. And then when it's dry, you'll be just about tied your second fly and you can put the, the foam retention device on that. Um, as a little uh, treat tonight, if anybody would like some foam retention devices. I have a whole pile of them and I'd be happy to mail you one. Um, unless you're a speed tire, you're not going to tie um, two and need two of them. But, um, and I've also, uh, another thing tonight for folks in attendance, these uh, binder combs uh, that you may have seen online, people using them to hold their thread. If I bought a case of these, and if you'd like a handful of these and a clothespin, if, if you uh, either comment to me or private message me, um, uh, send me an email from my Facebook or website, I'd be happy to hook up and get an address and mail you out some next week. Levi said that he's going to have to try the pattern out for tomorrow morning. 
It's a killer. Awesome job. Um, it, it, it really works. I've got <laughs> basically six. Uh, there were three uh, sheets of rubber legs, so that's uh, six total legs. I've tied them with four. I've tied them with eight. Um, you will with small fish, um, chubs, sunfish, bluegills. Um, they'll, they'll pull at these, and you'll notice the take. It'll just kind of, sometimes it'll halfway go down the water, sometimes it'll go all the way down, but then it'll come right back up. But if there's little fish there, there's big fish there. Uh, Michael Collier said, I love that fly. And a guy, Edward, starts with an M, it's not Mazzarelli, um, said that his wife would loan him some of the foam retention yes. devices. Yes, yep. They come smaller too, <laughs> um, but these are, uh, not as easy for me to manage. These are just the right size. Jason Clark said he would trade you a toolbox for one of those retention holders. Sweet. Scott Stradley said he would love one of the official foam retainer clips. Yep, and I'll, uh, I'll <laughs> like I said, if we uh, just send me a comment, I'll get back in touch with you this week and get an address and I'll send those out. Um, any comments or questions that we don't get answered during this live, um, I'll be I'll be reviewing those and I'll respond to those um, later in the next few days. Um, and so I'll try to get everything answered that I can. Um, these two, um, I don't have my fly box in here right now, but my bass box is full of these in various colors and... Uh, so I can't stress enough, if you're fishing topwater, these are the ones to have. Um, when I was spin fishing, the, the old black jitterbug was the, um, was the lure I like to use, and I think that angel of death is a, is a takeoff on that. So we've got a, a few extra minutes here. Um, I've got one more pattern uh, using a different material that's uh, fairly new to me, and uh, I'd like to to show you guys and gals that fly, and uh, maybe you can go have some fun with it. If I had a guy come in the shop a few weeks ago and and asked me about creeper, and I thought he was talking to me about being a creeper, but. It's this material. Uh, it's uh, it's new to me. I don't know how long it's been around. Um, it's the best of both worlds. It's it's a like a mop chenille type product with uh, thirty millimeter rubber legs built into it. I mean, this stuff is awesome. And uh, I'm going to tie up one of those um, for our last fly tonight. And uh, if you're fishing subsurface, I would encourage you to think about this. Um, I've tied a lot of uh, woolly boogers with uh, this instead of hackle. And uh, it, it's got great movement in the water. The black is a great helgramite pattern. Um, I think you can see with these shank jaws in the, not the center hub, but the, the normal hub, um, it allows that hook. You can see how much it's out of the jaws, and it's perfect right where it needs to be. Now for this fly, um, we're going to weight this. So this is going to be a chuck and duck fly. Um, it's uh, We're going to use... Uh, 0.025 lead-free wire, and we've got a 3 16 bead. Um, if I didn't have the bead, I would uh, loop the lead through the eye and buzz it on, but I haven't figured out a way yet to avoid that. I'm going to put 12 wraps of wire, and that's 12, not 11, and not 13. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I usually leave that little tag in on the back, and I'll show you why. And 
And I'm going to jam this up into the bead. But before I do that, I'm going to put my yellow chartreuse thread away and get my black back out. To get that started. I'm going to take a little bone dry and you could use thin. And I'm going to shove that up into that bead. just to give it a little bit of an anchor. I think probably UV resin is one of the things that's a revolutionary thing in the tie-in world. Uh, from finishing flies to wing cases, uh, building up saltwater flies, I mean, there's a lot of uses. I like to leave that wire going straight back so I can bind it down. And then I'm going to come up and I'm going to run a little bit. And don't be afraid to palm that bobbin a little bit when you're using the rotary function because you can still put tension on, not as much if, as you can when you're wrapping it individually, but um, So we're going to use, you could use brown or, or orange. Um, I've been using this burnt orange. And don't ever put this stuff in your mouth. Um, it does tie in easier if it's wet. So I usually have a, a little small uh, thing of water with a sponge in it. Um, I don't have that with me tonight, so I'm going to tie it dry. Uh, we want this to be a fairly short tail. We're not going to do like a, a full shank. We're going to do maybe three quarters of the shank. And when I tie materials in, one thing that I found, yeah. Um, someone was wondering if the video was going to be on your website so that they could watch it again. Um, it will... That's in my notes. I'm supposed to remind folks that this will be posted on the Norvice uh, YouTube channel um, by Wednesday with a materials list. So yes, you will be able to watch it again. When I'm tying in materials, especially like marabou, I put my left finger on the hook shank while I'm holding it. That way when I run the thread, it has a tendency to not push the material over the top of the hook. Um, it's just a little uh, thing to keep that from running around the hook shank. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to just spin it about three times. I'm going to run my thread right up behind the wraps of lead. And with this creeper, it's not like this is super important to have a... Uh, a body that's smooth but it makes me feel better and if you don't think that you've got enough that's what I feel is enough tail <laughs> you can certainly take another feather and do the same thing bless you excuse me do the same thing and tie another feather on, but I think that will be just fine the way it is. And I've tied this with copper beads and brass uh, gold beads. Um, I've tied it uh, with white and a white body with a white tail and a black bead and a white bead. Um, you can vary this up. Um, Who makes the Super Creeper? The Super Creeper. It's made by... FNF, 
It's a company out of the UK, and Nature Spirit is the uh, U.S. distributor. And from what I gather, they they can't get enough of it. I mean, it's it's being dyed. I've been waiting. It, I get red on order. Hope to see that uh, at some point here. But black, yeah, uh, chartreuse, orange, um, pink, olive, brown. The black makes a a uh, really awesome uh, Helgramite pattern. Uh, Sven Diesel has a video on tying with uh, an extended body with this stuff, and that in black, I mean, I can't imagine that that isn't going to be a killer. Um, I'm going to put some head cement down all the way from my tie-in spot all the way to the front. Half hitch. Get one good one at the back and then come to the front. And I like to put another good tight one right behind the bead. One in the back, two in the front, and then one in the back. And if you end up with the material and your thread both going down, if you just rotate it 90 degrees, nice thing about, that's one of the great things about the Norvice. It'll index at any of those uh, 90 degree. And the reason I like to put that extra wrap in behind the bead so that when I get done, you're basically not going to see the thread behind that bead. It'll be all locked in. And it'll be pulled in behind the bead. Put a little head cement on. Careful not to run it up inside the bobbin. Because I don't think Tim's got a, a cure for... Uh, people running head cement up in their bobbin. Pull that tight. I'm going to put a second one on. And you really have to put some tension on the thread so that you keep the thread behind that bead. Yes. Terry Landry's, Landry says hi. Hi Terry. Michael Collier said what is that material? It's a super secret material. No, it's it's called Creeper. It's made by FNF. Creeper. And uh, they got a website. They make all kinds of gummy stuff. Uh, I haven't got into looking at the rest of it. Uh, this stuff has been uh, awesome and tying a lot of different patterns with it. I've tied this with an orange bead on the front. Um, I think for a crayfish, this thing is um, is, is pretty good rep representation. So I would suggest uh, having a few of these in your box. Got a little blue hair in there. That's the creeper. Now, um, I do want to uh, let folks know that next Sunday night, July 25th, uh, 7 p.m., the uh, Norvice Live uh, tying will be Braden Miller, fresh off uh, 25 or so day vacation. So I'm guessing he'll be tying some killer patent inspired by his trip, possibly an Idaho spud game changer. We'll have to wait and see. Um, again, this video when, when material list will be uploaded to the Norvice YouTube page by Wednesday. Um, thanks for hanging with me tonight. This is my uh, first time. Um, we'll be up again in the future, and uh, hope everybody liked it. Uh, if you have comments about things that were good or bad, um, please put them in there, and I'll uh, I'll take them to heart, and we'll 
work on it next time. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you in the water.